Greetings and welcome back to 303. We turn now to page 978, 979. And we want to comment now just for a moment on recent scholarship, The Purpose of Theater by Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller, of course, the author of The Crucible, a text that we obviously will be studying. After a talk Arthur Miller gave, I'm reading with you on 978. After a talk Arthur Miller gave at the University of Michigan, a member of the audience asked him, what do you think the purpose, the ultimate purpose of theater is really? Miller responded, I couldn't even speak in those terms because it's like asking what is the ultimate purpose of the universe. To me, the theater is not a disconnected entertainment, which it usually is to most people here. It's the sound and ring of the spirit of the people at any one time. It is where a collective mass of people, through the genius of some author, is able to project its terrors and its hopes and to symbolize them. Now how that's done, there are thousands of ways to do it, of course. I personally feel that the theater has to confront the basic themes always. And the faces change from generation to generation, but their roots are generally the same. And that is a question of man's increasing awareness of himself and his environment, his quest for justice and for the right to be human. That's a big order. But I don't know where else expecting a play, I don't know where else accepting a playhouse where there's reasonable freedom one should hope to see that. The next heading, theater as a bridge between cultures. Arthur Miller once wrote, quote, in a theater, people are themselves. They come for their own, or they come of their own volition. They accept or reject, are, uh, are, are moved or left cold, not by virtue of reason alone or of emotion alone, but as whole human beings. We're over on now page 979. By the way, about the author, you can see your dates here, 1915 to 2005, Arthur Miller, a legend of the 20th century American theater. He chronicled the dilemmas of common people pitted against powerful social forces. His most famous plays are Death of a Salesman, for which he won a Pulitzer Prize, and The Crucible, one of the most frequently performed plays in the world today. Let's take a look now at uh, the continuation of the observation on 979. A communion through art is therefore unusually complete. It can be a most reliable indication of a fundamental unity and an inability to commune through art is, I think, a stern indication that cultures have not yet arrived at a genuine common ground. Had there been no Flaubert, no Zola, no Proust, Du Passant, Stendhal, Balzac, Dumas, had there been no Mark Twain or Poe, Hawthorne, Emerson, Hemingway, Steinbeck, Faulkner, or the numerous other American artists of the first rank, our conviction of essential union with France and of France with us would rest upon the assurances of the two departments of state and the impression of tourists. I think that had there been no Tolstoy, no Gogol, no Turgov, no Chekhov, no Dostoevsky, we should have no assurance at all nor any faint hope that the Russian heart was even ultimately comprehensible to us. Literature of the first rank is a kind of international signaling service telling all who can read that, whatever, that wherever that distant blinker is shining, live men, uh, live men of a common civilization." End quote. A compelling observation, and now we'll get ready for our introductory comments to Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible. Thank you.